Well, as you can see by my carving here, there's been some changes made. I'm out of breath because I've been out mowing the yard and it is hot outside today. I'm about to melt. Fortunately, sitting in here in shop with the air conditioner, I'm starting to cool off a little bit. Anyway, here's the original sketch. Well, I had a couple air conditioner installers come out yesterday to put a mini, little mini split in our house in one of the rooms that uh, doesn't cool down too good in the summer. And they were up there fiddling around all day with Judy, so I really couldn't do anything. So I sat down here and sort of got carried away, <laughs> carried away with that uh, blank we cut out. Anyway, it shrunk just a little bit. And the really amazing thing was, it turned into a female <laughs> instead of a male. See there, all this sex change business is even working its way into wood carving. Anyway, I wish I'd figured this out before. So what basically I did was just hog out that uh, cutout blank down to the basic shape. It doesn't really have any detail in it uh, showing up yet other than just a, a blanket that has no detail to it yet wrapped around the figure which also has no detail really to it. Their feet are done there. So, I got this done. So, this morning I got onto uh, Google and did an image search to see if I can find some women wrapped in blankets uh, that we can use as a reference when we carve our details. And these are about the only ones I could come up with that, you know, bear a relationship to this one here, like the blanket's over her shoulder here and wrapped down like it is over here on the blank. Uh, what I want to do with this figure, let me show you here, so I've drawn a line around the body here of where the blanket will end. Hmm? It's okay. And we will show her dress underneath here just to give it a little oomph if you might say. Now if you look at these ladies here, these two women, they had their blankets wrapped around them, but you can see their dress underneath where the blanket wraps around. It almost looks like that one has a price tag still on. Now this one up here, this is not a lady. Oh, it could be smoking a pipe. It, it was under my Google search of women in, Native American women in blankets. I like the way this, this de wrap detail comes down here. This is, this is where your carving gets fun to me, is when you start figuring out how to, uh, how to do the details, how to make it start looking snappy. And as far as the dress goes, Judy will get my research book here. I was thumbing through my research book for dresses that now that'll appear down here on the bottom. This is a nice one of a Cheyenne girl. And I'll show you something here in a minute. Here's some more over here. Just, just for reference. But my favorite is this one right here. This is a bronze by David Lemon, who I mentioned in the other, uh, other video, who has all kinds of uh, uh, how-to videos how he makes his figures and they're fantastic if you want to watch someone work and just turn out beautiful work if you want to check on him it was a chipmunk I crossed from my gallery over there if you want to check his site it's called now this is all together a day let me start over a day in the life of a lemon dot com Wait a second, let me fix, redo that. A day in the life of a lemon block. Let me start over again. A day in the life of a lemon dot blogspot dot com. And that will take you to his uh, blog where he publishes his videos. And believe me, he's got a ton of them. 
and they're all worth watching as far as I'm concerned. I watch every one of them, and I've watched, if he's got a new one, you'll find me there. But anyway, Judy and I own this bronze. We went up to Dave's studio and checked it out before we bought it, and it is a, just a beautiful piece of work. Maybe some, maybe I'll bring it down here later on so you can check it out. Okay, so if we do that with, you know, show this, show a skirt like this. Get back to the front. Oh, and one more thing I was going to show you. See this girl here? This is the model that he used when he made this bronze. He, he changed it a little, you know, on the dress detail and things like that. But this is... Uh, this was the model he used when he made this bronze. Okay? I thought that was, you'd like to see that. That's interesting. So let me get this out of here. <clears throat> so what we're going to do today is we're going to take it down just a little bit down there where the dress is. Expose the dress. Now you can see I've drawn a pencil line all the way around here of where uh, things are going. And one thing I, I always try to keep from doing is I never want these lines to intersect. If that was up there, that just would not look good at all when you did it. You want to, you want them to uh, be separate like we did up here. See all this up here, these jagged lines going every which way? That just creates interest in your piece. And that's what, <clears throat> excuse me again, <coughs> that's what generates interest. So the first thing we do is we start here, I start here, and I just scribe a line every so often. And I'll just make a break there. And I will go all the way around like that and take it down to where it's all one level. In other words, this is going to disappear, this break here. So I'll be one piece here. Boy, that's a tough piece of wood. There you can see where we're going. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and do, there's no sense of you watching me do all that, taking up time, and then we'll come back and do some more fun stuff, okay? I'll be right back. Well, I got some bad news. She got a little too close to the bandsaw and she lost her feet. Sorry you had to see that. Once I started uh, taking the wood off for the dress, she just got too tall. So, We had a little conversation and decided that she's going to have to lose some height, and, but she's going to be okay. I'm going to show you something now. You see, your fig you see a figure this way, but what helps you along a lot is seeing it completely when it's done, as much as you can as you're moving along. So watch this now. Here's a, just a base of mine. I didn't make this for her particularly. But watch how this changes your perception of how things are going to look when they're done just by setting her on that base. Isn't that amazing? As soon as I reach a certain point in a piece, I go make a base because that base becomes an integral part of this carving. Just like if you look at Dave's uh, sculpture here, 
He's got a base, and he does the same thing. You will. This is my reference book, full of uh, just pieces that uh, other artists have done, photographs, etc., like that. But if you look through here and you find sculptures, they're always sitting on a base. Now, for some reason, wood carvers, a lot of wood carvers, don't realize the importance of that simple simple little thing and I learned that from the very beginning you know presentation is just about 90 percent of anything you can make a you can make a lousy carving and put it on a nice base and it is just beautiful you can take a beautiful painting and forget the frame and it looks terrible but that's just just the way things are so just just remember that. Try that sometime and right. see if that so helps you just, out. What little time we have left here. Let's just look at these pictures here. But remember that base. That's going to help you out a lot. I guarantee it. So what we do, we'll just put some folds in the blanket. Just like it's in the picture there. have a couple coming up here because although she you can't see her hands it's assumed that she's holding this blanket together in here All right. so there'll be a lot of wrinkles from that point point. and with the grain running up one thing you always want to remember never carve in a piece of wood has two 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 sides friend gave me this knife I guess because it had an okay on there for I guess Oklahoma but anyway this is the sharpest little bigger around when you carve away from the way the grain runs like that wood comes off real easy when you try to carve like that look what, that's what happens it splits you can't do that you can't make that cut you're going to even if you force it, you're going to end up with a line across there where your wood will break. Where on this side, you can make a real sharp cut. So in this case here, see how the, the wood comes off of there? It just pops right off of there. I couldn't do it this way. I have to do it this way. And as you probably know, when you're carving on one side of the wood, when you get over to the other side, especially on the back side, you can see see the little splits here. That's because of that wood grain. Once you uh, understand grain in the wood, boy, you're going to really be able to enjoy wood carving a lot more. So now I want this to have a crease right in here. make larger cuts as we go along so that uh, fold disappears. Here. Oops, sorry. I'm going to put another one up here. Just a small one. these the upper part to go down un, into the underneath or into the lower part so I'm going to cut that out right there
clean it up. There, see, looks good. I got a comment uh, on that first video we did that I remember exactly who said it, but he said, is this going to be a man or a woman? Well, that's where I got the first idea of switching sexes on this thing. I had carved a full figure woman for quite a while, so now was a good time to do that. can do a lot of things, but it can't make tight turns like this little thing can. You get into a situation like this where you can carve in, you, know, you can spin off the wood on one side, but coming up, you hit that grain. You hit the grain problem right there. You can see that, you can see it there. In instances like that, just get you a tool, a gouge or something, and then go across that to smooth that out. Just taking out a little corner like that when I'm on a fold. A 
will make it look so much more realistic. Yeah, that's good. Create a little ridge where it kind of blossoms itself out there. Cloth always seems to do that. That looks pretty good to begin with. So I think that's going to be it for today's video. So you can see where we're going right now. I need to take off some more right in here. There, this is too much body right there. This side's fine. That side's not so good. And you'll also note that, see how I slope that down? That's the way it is in real life. It doesn't come up straight across like that. It has to slope down like that. The collar is always higher in the back than uh, it is in the front. And as far as, you know, making folds go, go underneath things, I do the same thing here. See how the lower lid goes underneath the upper lid? If you go look in the mirror, right here, just if you look at here, see setting bull's lower eyelid goes up underneath his upper eyelid. See that? This is Red Cloud. His does the same thing. It's little details like that, that you know, that make a carving really, really pop and look different. And that's what you want to do. You know, you don't want your carvings to look like everybody else's. One of the fellow asked me in the, on the blog after I uh, posted that first video, uh, if I tell you a little bit about myself where I learned how to carve and everything, because I seem to be, you know, not running with the herd, I guess you could say. Well, probably the first time I ever carved anything, or got any idea about carving, was I remember my granddad showing us how to make uh, whistles out of pieces of willow, willow branch. 
and like a lot of you, I'm sure, out there, boys anyway, uh, once you got into Boy Scouts, Neckerchief Slides was, was a place where a lot of carving took place. I remember my two older brothers and myself, every time the Boy's Life showed up in the mailbox, we almost had a fight to see who got to it first so we could go out to the garage and carve that new slide of the month. So that's probably where I picked, well, it is where I picked it, or began. And I always had an interest in the Old West, and that's just all I carve, is Old West figures. I love it. And uh, I started carving Indians here about, oh, 20, 20 years ago, 25 years ago. And boy, I sure do like to carve Indians, because they're just so colorful. I mean, there's so much color with an Indian, Native American, over a cowboy. Not that I have anything against cowboys, I like to carve cowboys too. But uh, Indians are just so much fun to carve because you can just add so much, so many little things to them. But uh, I definitely don't run with the herd. I don't, my wife, or my wife, my carvings are different than everybody else's. You see a carving by me, a lot of people say, well, it's immediately recognizable as one that I did. It's not a carving off of a rough out or anything, or out of a carving book or something like that. It's something I came up with myself, so it's mine. And that's why I put my name on the back of it, and that's why I put a little copyright symbol back there, because that's mine. I let people carve some of my carvings, but not all of them. I like to hold on to certain carvings because they're mine. They're not meant to be shared out to everybody else. But anyway, enough of that. So uh, that's going to do it for this video. And the uh, next video, we'll continue on. We'll add some folds, continue adding folds to the dress and everything. And maybe we'll even cut out a head blank and kind of rough it out and put it on here so we can get an idea again constantly seeing how the thing's going to appear it farther along, putting that head on there, it will help you, help you see that, maybe we'll do that. So anyway, until then, I'll talk to you later.